Magnus Carlsen dominated the first set of his match against Daniel Dubov. Do check out that video if you haven't seen it already. So day two, set two. I'm going to show you what happened. First game was drawn and this was the second game. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us Patreon or PayPal. Right, on with this game. So Carson with white and it's a Joko Piano and well they're repeating this opening that they had yesterday where uh, Dubov is inviting White to play knight g5 but Carlsen just wants to put a lid on things and keeps it nice and tight and then we have this move h6 from Dubov very very interesting so not bishop b7 from yesterday h6 so what is the idea of that well it's not just about preventing knight g5 if White castles here then in fact Black is going to advance with g5. Now that's the kind of typical Dubov attacking madness that he loves. But Carlsen isn't going to commit his king yet. Knight c3, very wise. That was after a minute's thought. And now Dubov switches tactics. Well, if the king is still on e1, there's no point in playing g5. So he switches back to bishop b4. Now we've got a kind of Vienna position, actually. And, and this is quite respectable for black because basically the point of this is to knock this knight out and that means black has greater control over the d5 square. So it's pretty tight at the moment and the pawn on h6 does actually fulfill quite a good function because it actually prevents the bishop from pinning here. d6 and so our rookie one looks sense, kind of sensible looking move. You'd play in uh, you know four knights actually. But instead, knight d2 from Carlsen. Well, it could be that knight is wants to spin around here. It could be he's making room for the f-pawn. And here a solid move is bishop e6. But, well, Dubov, you know, he likes adventurous play and he advances in the centre. But this is risky. Because there are a lot of tactics now in the position. As rip c. So if bishop e6, then queen f3, this is feels a bit uncomfortable. That bishop is pointing at that pawn on h6. So Dubov plays knight a5. Of course, he wants to eliminate that bishop. That will just kind of calm things down a bit. But there's a tactic. Bishop takes knight, queen takes, and here we go. Bishop h6. Of course, if that's taken, we have a lovely knight fork. Well, white is a pawn up, but that's not the end of the story because after f5, then it just gets really complicated again. Of course, if that knight retreats here or here, then black can take there because he doesn't have to worry about knight f6. So c4, attacking the queen. If the queen goes back, how is... Carlson going to save a piece because both of these attacked. Well, now we can see why he played c4. Bishop d2, good move. So the knight in the middle gets taken, but bishop takes knight. And after that flurry of exchanges and tactics, we can see that Carlson is actually a pawn up. Then again, Dubov's pieces are very active, so this is a tricky position. Queen e2. Carlsen wants to take that pawn. And, yeah, he's hoping perhaps that, uh, well, pawn takes, that'll make life a lot easier. But rook f4. So Dubov, you know, wants to maintain activity. Brings the rook up the board and defends the pawn. And here... Well, f3 could be played, and that kind of connects. But Carlsen played bishop d2, and he'd obviously completely underestimated Dubov's next move. Bishop g4, this is really painful. I mean, frankly, it's a pretty obvious move. We know, of course, that black wants to attack on the g file and attack using the light squares. Not a big surprise. If queen e3, bishop f3, and, you know, this is... 
Well, it's kindergarten chess, really. Um, so Carson played f3. Bishop takes f3. Why not? And suddenly Dubov is in the driving seat. So, you know, we've gone from a position where Carlsen was a pawn up and things didn't look bad to suddenly Dubov is on the attack and it is looking really nasty because after that move rook g4, you can see these light squares are just really weak with that bishop embedded on f3. This is absolutely horrible for white. Rook e1, the rook sweeps across. Rook f6, good move. So that means that the rook is now protected. So that enables the bishop to move at some point. D takes e4. And queen h5. So, well, yes, you can see every picture tells a story. And the story is that black's pieces are just so active. And... White King is in massive trouble. And this is what happened. Rook e3, attacking the bishop. Bishop takes pawn. There we go, that rook is protected and now attacks the queen. And here, well, Carlsen could have played queen e1. It's a really horrible position for White. White has a pawn down and the king is still in desperate trouble. Um... But instead he blundered. Another blunder. I mean, this is quite extraordinary. Queen e2. Allowing an instant kill. Rook takes g3. Game over. If rook takes rook, then queen takes queen. And if pawn takes rook, queen h1 is checkmate. Those weak light squares coming good for Dubov. Well... Really strange, very strange game from a position where it here Carlson looked well. I'm not going to say in control, but he's a pawn up, and it's looking steady enough. Um, I mean, it'll be very difficult to win that position with opposite color bishops. Pawns get exchanged, but white is better, and in the space of a few moves, to be checkmated terrible performance by the world champion and he admitted afterwards that that game really unnerved him so that meant Dubov went ahead in the second set and this was game three now this was uh, a Bogo Indian I'm just going to arrive at this position so Dubov with the white pieces you can see that Dubov has a really solid setup here. Very nicely centralized. And, well, he's managed to tame Carlsen's opening and that knight can potentially come into d5. So Carlsen took on d4. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to go to the end of this game. And here, the tactics start. e5. So that opens the diagonal and, of course, attacks the queen. So, three different ways for black to deal with e5, deal with the attack to the queen. Um, let me see. If pawn takes, then we can just take here. And that just wins material. Obviously, pawn takes, we've got rook takes, and the rook's opries as well. Knight takes... White also wins material like this, and a clean move f4. So the rook is attacked and the knight. So white wins material. So after e5, queen takes e5. This is the game. Bishop takes rook a7, attacking the bishop. So two pieces attacked. And here Dubov comes up with a very interesting idea. I mean, there, of course, he could just retreat the bishop and, well, it, I mean, I think white's slightly better there. But he played, Dubov played queen g4. Interesting move. So if pawn takes knight, queen takes knight, um, white is a piece up. So knight f6, queen takes d4, rook takes bishop. And now 
material is even again. But white is better. Black should exchange queens, and it's one of those irritating positions for black to play. You can see that this rook is tied down to defending the pawn. I think white's knight is very nicely placed because it has potential to hop into f5. The rook can perhaps double here. No doubt that white is better. Is it enough to force a win? Well, Carlson was obviously looking for something a little bit more active. He didn't want to stay in a passive position. So instead of exchanging queens, he took on b2. And now, well, an incredible idea from Dubov. Rook d2. Now, queen a3 is also pretty bad. Um, I mean, the queen is just really badly sidelined. So it's, it's very understandable that Carlson played queen c3, but it was clear from his expression that he was completely shocked by Dubov's next move. Carlson was probably anticipating this knight moving forward, but instead it dropped back. Very easy to overlook you know, an unusual retreat like this. Black is utterly lost. Okay, what's the basic idea? Well, the queen is attacked, and if it moves away, here's the idea. Queen takes rook, and mate next move. There we are. A shocker. So knight d1, the point was not only to attack the queen, but to open up the e-file for the rook. So after knight d1, well, basically it's gone. It's completely gone. Carlson tried rook e8, and there are several ways to win this position. Uh, some more spectacular than others. Dubov chose a pretty prosaic way, but why not? Let's just keep it simple. Rook takes, and then knight takes queen. And here Carlson resigned, because if knight takes queen, rook takes, mate is threatened, black needs to prevent the mate, and then white is just a piece up for nothing, basically, and the queenside pawns will disappear. So, really nice tactical shot from Dubov. So that meant he won the second set two and a half half, crushing, hit back from yesterday. So with one set all, they went into a tie break. And I'll show you in the next video what happened there. Thanks for watching.